Both noise and notes are mixtures of sound waves at different frequencies. A note is made up of a ripple pattern which repeats itself over and over again in an ordered way. While a noise is made up of individual ripples which have no relationship to each other and do not repeat, and so are disordered. If an object moves, it causes a disturbance in the surrounding air, which ripples out as sound waves. If the object vibrates with a fast and repeating pattern, like a string, then the sound waves will be evenly spaced and regular. That is, air particles are squeezed together into evenly spaced waves. These evenly spaced regular sound waves are heard as notes with distinct pitches. But if you drop a vase or slam a door shut, you hear a noise which is made up of unrelated frequencies with no repeating pattern, and so this will be heard as a noise, with no defined pitch. To be a note, it doesn't really matter how complicated the individual ripples are, as long as the pattern repeats itself. And musical notes don't even need to be made by musical instruments. Anything that vibrates and disturbs the air in a regular pattern will produce a note, so a Formula One race car engine, for example, or a bumblebee, mm -hmm. will also create a note. Simple sound waves, like from a flute, sound smooth and even, while more complex and bumpy wave patterns, like from a violin, sound richer and less smooth. However, it's interesting to note that some repeating waves can be so complex that our ears cannot detect the pattern and we perceive them as noise. And a sound wave may have a repeating component and a non-repeating component, in which case we hear a note mixed with a noise. As I explained in my previous video, a sound is a vibration that travels through a medium, like air, which is called a sound wave. And to be a note, the sound waves have to be very regular and evenly spaced, and this type of wave is called a standing wave. Normally, when something makes a wave, like a rock dropped into a bucket of water, the wave travels outward, gradually spreading out and losing strength. But if the container is small enough, these ripples hit the edge of the bucket and bounce back. In this way, you've trapped the waves in the container and forced them to bounce back and forth inside the bucket. If you dropped another rock into the bucket, it will create new waves which will meet the oncoming waves created by the first rock. This will create a jumble of waves, some going out and some coming in, and they will partially cancel each other out as the high point of one wave hits the low point of another wave, netting out to nil. But what if we perfectly timed dropping the rocks in such a way that the waves reinforced each other? So the high points of the outgoing waves would meet the high points of the incoming waves and make them even higher. The low points of the outgoing waves would meet the low points of the incoming waves and make them even lower. So instead of cancelling each other out, this would create a regular pattern of perfectly ordered waves. You would have regularly spaced waves that are trapped, bouncing back and forth in a container and it would look like the waves were actually standing perfectly still, with the high points and the low points appearing regularly in the same spots again and again. The closest you can get to creating this with water is if you use your hand to create waves in a tub. If you move your hand back and forth too quickly, this just creates a jumble of waves. If you move your hand back and forth too slowly, this also just creates a jumble of waves. But if you move your hand back and forth at just the right speed, you can reinforce the waves and make them bigger and bigger with just a small amount of effort. This is called resonance and is the natural frequency of the container. By reinforcing the natural frequency, you increase the amplitude or the size of the waves. You could do the same by pushing a swing. Small pushes at the swing's natural rhythm 
will gradually increase the height of the swing. This is a process by which a small amount of effort repeated at an object's natural rate or natural frequency can amplify the effect. Musical instruments do something similar. They trap sound waves and make them bigger and louder with relatively little effort. A string continually pushes air back and forth at the string's natural frequency and thus reinforces the sound wave. A column of air, like a flute, continually pushes the air back and forth at its natural frequency inside the tube and reinforces the sound wave. Now, of course, a string vibrating by itself isn't going to move a lot of air, and thus isn't going to be very loud. But you can amplify the string by attaching it to a piece of wood, like the body of a guitar. This causes the wood to vibrate at the same frequency as the string. So now instead of just a string vibrating by itself, you have a large piece of wood vibrating and pushing the air. This means you can actually create quite a loud sound from a very small vibrating string. You can see this clearly by hitting a tuning fork. By itself, the tuning fork is quite quiet and soft. But if you put the base of the fork on a piece of wood, you suddenly hear a dramatic increase in volume as the vibrations from the fork are transmitted to the wood. So what you're hearing is not the vibration of the tuning fork, but rather the vibration of the wood. And an even more interesting exercise is if you put in earplugs, hit the tuning fork and then put it on your head. Now you will hear the note perfectly clearly, but no one else in the room will hear anything. This is because what you're actually hearing is the vibration of your skull. The body of a guitar or the soundboard of a piano function in the same way. All standing waves have spots where the water level or string doesn't move at all. These are called nodes. This includes both ends of a string, which are fixed. And there are also other spots where the water level goes up and down a lot. These are called antinodes. These determine the length of the wave and therefore the pitch of the note, which is the topic of the next video.